most of you will probably think that we on side opposition are the underdogs in this debate. Socialism is an outdated and disproven ideology with no place in the globalised economy of the 21st century. Don't get too excited. Um, this, this, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly my point this evening. We in the West, and particularly in Britain, have an arrogant misconception of our recent economic history. We believe that Margaret Thatcher inaugurated a period of rightful consensus and proved socialism to be an unworkable ideology. We are also arrogant about the role our economic philo philosophy will play in the future and misguided in our belief that China, predicted to become the world's largest economy by 2013, is on its way to becoming a paragon of capitalist organisation. These two narratives need to be dismissed, ladies and gentlemen. There is no reason why socialism might not work in Britain, and there is no reason why it will not be the pro predominant global ideology in future. As the first opposition speaker this evening, though, it falls upon me to introduce our honourable guests on side proposition. We have just heard from Mr Andrew Rosendell, the Conservative MP for Rumford. Mr Rosendell caught a controversy in 2012 when he expressed a huge admiration for the Chilean dictator Pinochet. He, also refer he has also been referred to as a prospective left-wing hate figure and touted as a potential London mayoral candidate, albeit by the blogger Guido Fawkes. To continue the case for the opposition is Mr Theodore Dalrymple, the author, journalist and former prison doctor, who has written extensively on how progressive values undermine traditional, traditional morals and lead to crime, drug abuse and other social ills. Our third opposition speaker is the MEP Mr Daniel Hannum, the journalist and Member of Parliament for South East England. Ex-President of Oxford University Conservative Association, now considered one of the most eloquent speakers in the European Parliament. Finally, we are joined this evening by the Member of Parliament for Wokingham, former Secretary of State for Wales and two-time contender for the leadership of the Conservative Party, Mr John Redwood. Mr President, these are your guest speakers and they are most welcome. This evening, though, I must also say a few words about a man who needs no introduction. In his very own words, life membership does not equal life presidency. And unfortunately, next weekend, our president, Parrot Watcherson, St John's College, will be leaving us. Parrot, you do not need to be told how great your term has been. <coughs> Countless chamber events, the visit of Hamid Karzai, Seth Blatter, to name but a few. Even yesterday, we were joined by Katie Hopkins and King Joffrey. Parrot, you've been an excellent friend and an excellent president. Thank you for everything you have done for all of us. You have provided a very tough act for anyone to follow. I will begin this evening by discussing what this debate is not, and secondly, what socialism is. The motion before the House tonight is not, this House believes that socialism is better than capitalism. If it was, who knows, I might be on the opposite side. In order to win the debate tonight, we on side opposition do not need to prove that socialism is better than any of its, any of its alternatives, but rather that it is a, a simply a workable system. The debate this evening is also not a philosophical one. We are not asked whether socialism is a force for good along the lines of our religion debate earlier this term. We are being asked not whether it is desirable, but whether it is workable. This is a trap which the opposition have already fallen into. We are not talking about the relative merits of socialism as a, per se. We are talking about whether or not it can work. We heard from side proposition just then that socialism was bad, but we did not actually hear that it did not work. It, it is worth pointing out also that socialism is fundamentally an economic philosophy. When we discuss socialism, we are not, obviously, discussing the political systems that have accompanied it, but rather the operation of economies where a large or substantial proportion of their output comes from state or communal ownership and programmes. That is what we mean by socialism, ladies and gentlemen. Socialism does not require all assets to be controlled by the state, in the same way that capitalism can operate alongside government spending and limited state ownership. But now, and it makes sense, it follows on very nicely from one of the points made by side proposition, I would like to consider the first piece of capitalist narrative. The narrative that in Britain, socialism sa failed and capitalism saved. When Peter Ma Mandelson famously said, we are all Thatcherites now, he was correctly highlighting the Thatcherite, consens Thatcherite consensus that Britain under socialism was a failure and a good dose of capitalism we needed to get us back on our feet. Much of the reason why people believe socialism does not work is because of this narrative of capitalism being comparatively better. 
As a, socialist or, as a socialist or somewhat socialist nation, Britain, let us say from 1945 to 1979, had two major recessions, one at the beginning of the 1970s and another towards the end. Now, at the end of 2013, we are, now, we are roughly 68 months on from the beginning of the recession in 2008. 68 months on from the socialist recession of 1973, British GDP was 6.7% higher than it had been at its peak pre-recession. 68 months on from the 1979 recession, GDP was up 5.82%. The figures for other British recessions in the 20th century, such as the recession of the early 20s, the Great Depression and the recession of the early 90s, are 6.93%, 7.24% and 13.82% respectively. As of October 2013, 68 months on from the start of our recession in 2008. Where do you think we are compared to our pre-recession peak? Ladies and gentlemen, we are at minus 2.51%. That is a whole 8% worse than any other recession we have seen in the 20th century. Um, socialism in Britain was admittedly not perfect, but it was <coughs> workable. Although the period of socialism saw high inflation, towards the end at least, and a number of economic problems, it also brought an extraordinary increase in living standards and a decent record of growth for a considerable part of its period. As we have seen, recessions happen all the time. The point of my argument is not to say that socialism would work better in Britain than capitalism necessarily. It is to say that economies undergo stresses and strain, and as we have seen, we have seen recently capitalism has the same problems as socialism and to use that argument against socialism to say it does not work is fallacious and that actually suggests that capitalism also does not work. If side proposition want to admit that capitalism also doesn't work, maybe we should all just go home. Um, another point, side socialism say, side proposition, <laughs> side capitalism even, say socialism does not work. I should probably remind side proposition of, 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 of the year 2008 when it was socialism Bear in mind, nationalisation, which came in to completely, completely save the British economy. Look at Iceland, for example, where all of its banks went completely bankrupt because they didn't have the money to nationalise them. You cannot begin to imagine where we would be today if it... Yes, oh, go on. Iceland has grown about 12% since then. Un uh, no, 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 no. That's not true. Maybe that's, a, that's not true. Iceland... Them, rather than no. bailing out the poor in order to rescue some wealthy bankers and bonds... That's... Like <laughs> That's an, that's an incredibly, an incredibly clever use of statistics there. Yes, Iceland has probably recently grown 12%. That's because its economy collapsed and went to 50% roughly of its original value in the wake of the recession. Thank you for that intervention. Um, so, uh, it's not hard to grow from an incredibly low base. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there is another point. I've said today, or I've said already this evening, how socialism has worked in Britain. And I'm not saying that there are certain circumstances where capitalism has not worked better. I think there are. But I'd also like to point out that today, and it's not, not often recognised, socialism is working very, very well in one certain country. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's second largest economy, as I'm sure you all know, is China. It is also one of the world's second, it is also one of the world's fastest growing economies. Yes, it is of course true that China in recent years has moved towards the Western model, or a Western economic model. However, in China, state-owned companies still produce over 50% of output, producing over half, um, employing over half of workers. 65 companies in the Fortune 500 company list are Chinese state-owned, not Chinese companies, Chinese state-owned companies, that's 13%. And it, in 2011, 43% of profit in the People's Republic of China came from companies either wholly or largely controlled by the state. The point I'm trying to make is that we are incredibly arrogant that capitalism is an accepted and accepted as the best method of running our economy. And we do believe a lot of people, you know, everyone, everyone in the West or, or, or the neoliberals assume that China is sort of coming towards us. They're accepting our ideologies. Ladies and gentlemen, they are not. China is not a free market economy, it is a socialist market economy. And they are doing much, much better than us free market economies here in the West. <coughs> Sorry, was that a point? Um, well, yeah, sure. Point of information, could yeah. you compare the income level in China with the income level in the United uh, Kingdom? I think you'll find of, an awful lot poorer. Of, of course they are, of course they are. But it's to do with, where, with, with how... <laughs> Um, the reason why 
The reason why China is currently, not historically, performing much better than us is because there are. There are a lot of benefits of combining a socialist and a capitalist system and keeping, dare I say, a slight socialist bent in that system as China does. Things like economies of scale, they, they, they exploit massively to us. And also, I mean, the greatest argument for socialism and for, for China's current economic model is the fact that they invest a considerably higher proportion of their gross domestic product than we do. Indeed, they invest over 35% of the gross domestic product, higher than Britain or America ever did while they were industrializing, which sets them up in a much better position for the future. Who knows, in 100 years, who knows where China will be? I dare say they'll probably be in a better position than us. Um, finally, ladies and gentlemen, I said... I hope tonight when you walk out the doors, you make an informed decision. You do not make a decision based on the narrative provided by side proposition here. Socialism has been successful here in Britain. It is now successful in riding nations such as China. And I dare say it will be successful in future. Mr. President, Parrot, congratulations on the best terms of side being in Oxford. We will miss you and we wish you all the best for the future. I beg to propose.